Ready. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Is the meeting properly announced? Yes. Roll call, I'll show that all committee members are here. Approval agenda. So moved. Second. Most been made and seconded to approve the agenda. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Public participation on agenda items as it may come up. Approval of the minutes of the last meeting. So moved. Second. Okay, most been made and seconded to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Any other discussion? Not all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. We have anyone in the act on stop sign warning lights. Uh, we'll take all three of them together. Pat, you want to start us all on that? All right. So each of these locations, we went and, and did some investigating them. So um, start. I'll, I'll try to go as quick as I can. Uh, EMV intersection, as you can see, it's 35 miles per hour. Uh, 30 by 30 stop sign is there. Stop head sign is installed. Uh, the site distance, the criteria there is just underneath that. The site distance to that stop sign is greater than 2,000 feet. Uh, the, the site distance to the stop sign is greater than 1,600 feet. The site distance to the stop head sign is greater than 2,300 feet. Required site distance, stop site distance uh, for that location is 250 feet. Going back and looking at a 20 year crash history for that location. Um, three incidents uh, dating back to 03, uh, two car. Uh, so when I look at this, I, I put in there um, what I was able to pull off the, the website I was looking at for crashes, um, teen driver, occupancy protection, there was one fatality, one injured in that 03 incident. 18, uh, there's property damage, um, speed, occupancy protection. There's a 65 plus driver flag that was on there, no injuries. Uh, four, one, or 21 and 22, uh, there was property damage and then that, that flag that come up as a 65 plus driver. Um, I also did reach out to the sheriff and I posed those questions to him uh, in his office and he had an opportunity to, uh, to reply back to us. Um, I asked him about crash his, uh, history of citations or failure to stop at these locations, if there were any, uh, any issues or concerns that, that he had or the officers are having. Um, and of course, his responses are down below there. Uh, no citations for this intersection, no major concerns for traffic violations or safety concerns at this location. I also got a short uh, clip video here if you want me to run that quick and do that. Okay. Keep going to the next location. Yep. Okay, so uh, from the, from E and B, uh, we're going to go uh, to the intersection of E and G. Again, this uh, this area, uh, you can see uh, what we went out and did a little did a little investigation. Uh, G and E intersection, fifty five mile an hour speed in that area now. Uh, so Stop sign is there, uh, 30 by 30. Stop head sign is installed. Um, the site distance, uh, so uh, on the south side, or if you're northbound, uh, the site distance to the stop sign is 1457. Uh, site distance to the stop head sign is 690. Uh, the 
the required sight and distance to the stop sign is 750. The, uh, on the other side, on the north side of the intersection, again, it's 55. Our standard speed uh, stop sign is there. Uh, stop ahead sign is installed. Uh, sight distance to the stop sign, greater than 1,600 feet. Sight distance to the stop ahead sign, again, greater than 1,600 feet. Um, same questions were asked uh, a little bit uh, of the three I'll back up. Again, at this location, there were three incidents uh, dating back 20 years. Uh, one in uh, 2015, uh, property damage with no injuries. Uh, in 2021, it was a motorcycle uh, impaired and one injury. And then in 2022, uh, the most recent, there was a two car accident there. Uh, and the flag that was noted on the, uh, on the incident was a 65 plus driver, um, a one fatality, and then one injured at, at, at that event. Um, again, they asked the sheriff the same questions. Um, history of citations or failure to stop at these locations. Uh, you know, any concerns that they have in their offices, their road officers have brought forth or anything like that. Um, so no history of citations and no major concerns that the sheriff had noted. So um, I got videos of these two locations here as well. Um, this one here is, is uh, going to be northbound. So we're, we are at the south end of, of G. And so we're going to be driving north here, this, this run. I'm sorry, we so are on the north side, so so on the north side of G, we're going to be going south. Yeah. So we're headed south right now. And this is the other direction. Now we are going uh, north. But I'm, I'm trying to prevent the uh, audit teller that might be temporarily distracted and uh, that's not familiar with that, that intersection that may miss that stop ahead sign and then not stop soon enough. And, and there's an oncoming semi loaded with 80,000 pounds coming down that hill that may be not able to stop as fast as normal with their load or there's maybe weather conditions that may impede their stopping distance as well. Uh, it's just a uh, an extra measure that we can warn people that there's a dangerous intersection here. And it, for $1,000, I understand is the cost of these. We could possibly prevent an accident or even a fatality. Now, there's been a fatality there recently, uh, as well as the other intersection. And there's also been one at A and B, which has prompted me to put these 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 warning beacons up. I've also been campaigning recently, knocked on a lot of doors, probably 300 doors around New Chester. And I've mentioned this uh, out of safety, safety concern, and they all thought it was a great idea to have these installed. So I have an overwhelming uh, back and support of the New Chester people that also think this is a great idea. Um, so my, my, my concern is, and I don't think that uh, it's necessarily a concern that were, there are people being cited for stop signs. I don't think it'd be reasonable for an officer to set out there and wait for somebody to run the stop sign and take a ticket on a rural area like that. So it's just a rural road. Um, there's, there's a lot of 
a lot of hazards out there and we have a lot of traffic. Uh, semis and enough, like I said, out of town traffic. Mr. Well, Chair, there you go. Um, I thought we were going to take all the three of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So three down, down moving down the, the intersection A and B, again, did a similar, similar thing that we did at the other two intersections. Yeah. 55 mile an hour zone, 30, 30 by 30 stop sign there. Uh, when you were on the east side, uh, there's a double stop sign and stop ahead signs installed. So double, there's double stop signs, double stop installed on the east side. Uh, sight distance to the, to the stop ahead sign is uh, 1660. Uh, sight distance to the stop sign, uh, 20, you know, greater than 2,400 feet. Again, the required 750. That's the same for, for 55 mile an hour. Uh, we are on the west side. Uh, it's still 55, the same 30 by 30 stop sign is installed. Stop ahead sign is also there. Um, and then uh, the site distance is there. The, the site distance to the stop ahead sign is 1870. Site distance to the stop sign is 754. So you know, getting close uh, within a couple feet there. The required site distance is 750. What this intersection have that the other two do not is that rumble strips are installed at this intersection. So in, in advance of that stop sign, <laughs> we have rumble strips in the pavement, ground into the pavement. Those, that first rumble strip that you hit, it's, a pro, it's about, there's some leeway in it, but it's about a thousand feet from the stop sign is when you get that first rumble. So here again, we have a couple clips. Now we'll try to run through them. Now here we are uh, westbound. We're going to be going west. circumstances at all three of these intersections uh, that make it dangerous and we should also mention that there's dual stop signs there in the rumble strips also point out that this is a dangerous intersection that beacon might be an added safety feature for a thousand dollars we can install here again might save a life so i appreciate everyone's consideration of this and hopefully we can get this to go through so it's uh, safe for the public All right. my question is um did you survey the entire county or just? Well, this is my district, so that's yeah. my point. Yeah, these are especially dangerous intersections that people have also mentioned. Uh, they're concerns to me as well. But all three of these. Yeah, on some committees. I'd like to make a motion that, uh, from what the sheriff has told us, and for 20 years not having a lot of accidents there, what the most was three at one intersection, that we, uh, we didn't take no action. Second. Okay, most of them made the second. Uh, going on further with it? Is there any discussion? I have a question. I, yes. uh, I was wondering do you put up a sign at all that says traffic on such and such a road does not stop? 
stop at the intersection, that be something. You know, maybe somebody's thinking when they come up to the, they're going to stop as well. There, there is a sign that that states cross traffic does not stop. For, uh, this, I don't. It's not installed at any of these three intersections, oh, but oh. there is a sign that exists of something of that nature. Um, and for an elderly person, maybe that wouldn't be the worst thing. Yeah, I, I, I understand the, the desire to do something to improve the safety within Adams County. Uh, that's a concern of mine as well. However, uh, please don't take this the wrong way. When we're operating motor vehicles up on the highway, we have to have some responsibility and accountability for ourselves in that vehicle. Now, if we're operating while we're distracted and we go through a stop sign, it's an honest that's mistake. on you. It's, an honest oh, yeah, don't know. it's not yeah, a mistake. It's, it's an accident. It's not a mistake. We could prevent an accident. That's a choice. Thousand dollars. Negligence. No, we, could, we could save a life. But a thousand dollars. I hate to think that we don't pass this and somebody is killed, and I, then we have to say. That for a thousand dollars, we could have saved that person's life. I, I, I really hope that we make a better decision here than that today. Okay, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. On the county G and A, they record reduced speed. So this one here, uh, we were looking at. Uh, the speed zone on County G from the intersection of A and G going north to Ember Court. Uh, that's going north of Brooks area. You're on the you're on the east side of the tracks. You're going north. So did something very similar. Um, went back and, and looked uh, County G. Um, going north from the intersection of, of A. So if you were standing at the intersection of A on the east side of the tracks, it is 35 miles, it's a 35 mile an hour zone or four tenths of a mile going north. Uh, I know it's hard to visualize where that is right now, but, but four tenths of a mile north of that intersection is 35 feet. At that point, it does switch to uh, 55. Um, there are, uh, as previously mentioned, a few curves in there. Um, the curves do have speed advis advisories on those. <coughs> uh, and then as well as, uh, uh, so a one type of curve sign has an arrow and it's, in, it's yellow. So be advised, there's a curve coming up. There's another type of sign where we put an advisory speed underneath that. And that exists on one of the curves within this segment of road. I went back and pulled some, some crash data in this area. <clears throat> similar, similar things, found two accidents in that area. Um, one, uh, one indicated uh, in 2010, uh, impaired driver occupancy protection. And then another most recent one in 2020, uh, where it was indicated that there was some property damage, but no injuries. In, in, Ask similar questions uh, to the sheriff's department if there was a high incident of speeding citations or things in that location, or or if the officers or the sheriff had some concerns. Excuse me. And uh, the sheriff responded that that he didn't have any at, at this point in that area. So I might mention that there's an autistic resident there in this this zone that I'm proposing to reduce the speed. There's also a bus stop at that residence as well. Well, that I've noticed there's no bus stop sign and I also point that out in that residence. There's a boat launch, public boat landing launch. So we have a lot of activity with that, a lot of possible out of counters enjoying that lake as well. Uh, and then we also have the prison traffic, there's visitation. Uh, there's a lot of curves in this, this area and there's also a great residential uh, area into there, a lot of activity here. Uh, so I find it reasonable uh, not to have the speed limit just jump from 35 to 55. You can do a gradual from 35 to 45 and then bump it up just that it's past the Mercourt to 55. Uh, they make this whole area. I've had a lot of people message <coughs> this to me about their concerns. People tend to drive a little faster than they should do there, but uh, by reducing the speed limit, we make it much safer for everybody to travel through there. So I hope that you got you've gotten some response from DOG on that. Oh, I, I did. Yeah, there's there's more. There's another attachment for this segment as well. And I also was 
during my campaign mentioned in this to a lot of the residents and they thought this is a great idea as well so hopefully well we'll, we'll pass this <clears> through uh, and then along these lines there's been honest buggy traffic on g there this way gosh um, my mr chair yes Amish buggy signs are next and um, i'll wait on that and uh we should listen to this next portion before we get yeah. any more comments so uh it was mentioned that there's a autistic child in that area. That's true. There is. Uh, there's also a bus stop there for that if, child. If you're, uh, are you aware that there's an autistic child sign placed in that area? Yes, there I is. Know. Yes, but there's no school bus stop for that. The school bus signs are not placed automatically; they're placed as warranted, and so, that's based on sight distance. Yeah, just because there's a school. Stop. And I, I came up on that one morning, and that it's hard to see the bus on the approach. And when I stopped, they stopped. But it's hard for people to see the, the bus coming approaching that stop and move the lights in. So it is kind of a, uh, you're on top of a hill. It's really hard to see that, um, especially with an autistic resident there. It's, it's especially. I'm not so, mistaken, that autistic child lives within 35 mile an hour. No. Or, um, regards to the it's, speed it's zone. Past there. It is. It's past there. It's in the 55 zone. Regards to the speed zone here, I did reach out to DOT as well. Yeah. Because they know that was something that might might be considered. So I I don't I don't think I'm going to read through this entire email unless you really want me to. Uh, it goes on uh, basically the, the the idea here is it goes on uh, to talk about speed reductions, uh, what you can and can't do. Of course, there's a table here that talk, that gives speed uh, speed limits as to where they apply and what or if. Uh, the county can do as far as reduction. Now, it's been indicated that we can reduce it by 10 miles per hour. And uh, I, I certainly that uh, could, could say that might be an option. Um, however, if, if you were going to consider doing that, I would, as stated here in this email, it, it's encouraged that you do it on the basis of, of an engineering study to justify the change, even at 10 miles per hour. Think about these areas uh, not just this area, what other reductions that you may want to consider, do you do it based on what? That's some some idea. Activity, residential activity, especially public area, public home lines. That's, that's my concern. They're going to they're gonna go off of how much traffic there is. Yeah, you know, traffic and accidents, and then that's that, not enough of what could be. The idea is you yeah. want to prevent accidents. So I did. I did reach out. Um, I did reach out to uh, our general engineer for a, a rough idea of what an uh, engineering study, you know, speed engineering study, would cost. If the you know if the committee was going to go that way or consider something of that nature, so I do have that sitting aside in the office if we need to go that route. I didn't videotape this area. Uh, this is a little longer segment. I, I guess I should have. I, I, I did it. I think we won't do any enough to even, or I have any. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. It would be good to see because there's a, there's a rolling knoll there with hills and just slopey and curvy. It's just <laughs> not even that we're going to at 45 either. So it's really. I'll make a motion that we take no action. Second. Okay. Motion to make and second to take no action. Is there any more discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. I'm just buggy. Much buggy signs. Uh, so if you remember, uh, the request was about two miles south of uh, 82 uh, going north. Uh, up to county down. So I did something similar. Uh, I went back, looked at a 20 year crash history on that segment of highway. So 20 years I looked back. Within that 20 years, there were 57 uh, incidents. Um, I did not write or break those all down to what was involved or what happened. Okay, there were, there were 57 total, um, 42 excluding the deer. So if you take the car dealers out of there, there were 42 incidents in the area. 
the uh, again reached out to the sheriff, and, and you guys can you know everybody can kind of see the, the broader <coughs> concern here. We've talked about this before. Uh, of course, the buggy centers. It really the question is, you know, where do you and where do you not? Uh, because they are um, no no two ways about it. We do have uh, you know folks living in our community that that. And transport by horse and buggy now. So they are here with us. I might mention they're new to the area, so there's a lot of people not used to the, the Amish buggies. Um, there's also a lot of curves, and I'd like to see something there to warn drivers, especially with those arid areas around those sharp curves. You can put a sign there, just let people know, hey, there's Amish buggies here. And then also when you get north of uh, E, you get in those curvy areas there on G as well, where there's be warranted to put an Amish buggy sign. I also might point out where we go east of here, where there's Amish, you, you, where there's a lot of Amish residents, you see Amish buggy signs everywhere. Um, so I, I think it's just, you know, we'd like to welcome all cultures into the area. And this would be one way of doing so, uh, to also make it keep everybody safe um, for these uh, new residents that they have in your new chapter in the area there. So I appreciate everyone that we have something there from the DOT. Yeah. Well uh, again I just, I did reach out to the DOT and then of course asked them you know similar things like the other topics as in regards to horse you know the horse and buggy type signs that, that they use. Um, not just they use but are in the MUTCD for all of our use I should say. Um, I don't, if you want me to read through this, I can. It kind of talks that they do have some up on the state highway system. They do it on a, on a justification basis. So what, what they do is they go out, well, they have a, a trail camera, I guess, if you will. And if you read through this a little bit, it, it, it gives us a little bit of a background on what they did. Uh, so they put their trail cameras up to see what see what the volume of the horse and buggy traffic is. I don't know what that number would be to say yes or no. For example, I'll just give you a couple examples. We were in our office here the other day. Um, there, was, there was snow on the ground yet anyway. Uh, out of my surprise, past, going past the window was a horse and buggy. Uh, the horse and buggy had three canoes in the back of it. Most folks were going out to the dam to, to walleye fish, which was really surprised. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, was coming back, uh, I was coming back from an appointment in Madison. I turned on to uh, County A, uh, A and G intersection there, and I, I see uh, I could see lights up ahead. So I wasn't, I thought it was, quite honestly, I thought it was a UTC. As I got closer with our vehicle, I got closer, I could see this particular buggy, not all of them do this, but this particular buggy had uh, two red lights in the back, a flashing yellow in the back, and on the front, they had two headlights on the front of it. So that particular buggy was, was really well lit, but not all of the uh, segments uh, do that. Uh, we'll use lighting. Some folks, some of the groups will not even use reflective tape. On That's their, their culture, and it's important that we respect all cultures. So they, are, they are different. <laughs> You know, they say we talked about this. It's just, you know, where, where? And, and if you start putting up curves, what's so putting them up as everybody? Is I'm speaking that if if you start putting signs up, you know, random places saying, and there's a, a horse and buggy that goes down there once a week, or I don't know if they're once a week or once a day or once a month. Yeah. But if you start putting more more signs out there, just like any other signs that you can put. Uh, Deer crossing, or you can put uh, um, you know slow down signs and everything. People become oblivious to them because they see them all the time. Yeah. And until the till the amount of uh, um, traffic is you know like it says you have a trail camera going, and if there isn't, you know, I, I realize that in in they they understand what they're doing out there just as much as anybody else right. does. Yeah. And I don't see that we. Um, at this time, for there, there is coming in the community, and there might be a time that we have to put them up. But at this time, the right. community is now. Once we get a better count on what's going on, I think I think we'd be jumping ahead of the game here. We could have signs up all over, and wouldn't be doing any good. 
Well, I tend to agree with the discussion because again, we're talking about one specific area of the entire Right. Well, I hope so I'll make a motion that we uh, that we understand my concerns here. Safety concerns that we'll you, take I'm action. not going to address you unless you raise your hand anymore. Okay. Done. I make a motion that we uh, we do not uh, go with the Amish uh, buggy sites. Okay. Second. Any motion been made and seconded to deny the Amish buggy sites? Is there many any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carried. Moving on. We will act on road material bids. The road material bids, what these are, is the same thing we've done in years past. We bid out our general use materials. These are not project specific to any one job. But what we do, um, we advertise, vendors are welcome to bid on it. Um, we Take those numbers and present them to you. So, what had typically done in the past is we award uh, and then use the location most advantageous to Adams County. So, what that means, right, is if if we're working in the northern part of Adams County, we use Seven Sisters, for example. For some reason, we need riprap, but yet we're working in central Adams County here. Unfortunately, that's still going to be running up the Seven Sisters because that's you know one of the places that has riprap. Right. Uh, in this case here, we only did receive uh, the one bid that met the deadline. That was milestone materials and uh, uh, deal gasser on the asphalt asphalt part of it. The did other we did receive one other uh, bid that come in a day late uh, from the due date on the proposal. So again, this is just general use daily stuff when we. You know, go out. Maybe we got a call with them. These are the numbers that we would be paying them the vendors. Any motion? Yes. On the road material bids, I'll make a motion that we accept the bids from the two that are put in. Okay. There's a second. 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 Any motion made and seconded to approve the bid to milestone materials and BL gas. Any other discussion? Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Seal coating oil bids. And this one here, we did receive two bids uh, on time uh, and all met our requirements. Uh, one is from Migs, and the other is a combination of Flint Hills and Barner. Uh, Flint Hills supplies the oil, Barner uh, sprays it. Um, when you look down, uh, to the bottom here. These numbers right here are the totals at the bottom of this page. So that's the that is the uh, material plus the application right. combined. So the totals at the bottom. Okay. When you look at those and the and the, uh, the oils that we use, uh, mix is the is low by by quite a bit. Uh, and in seal coating bidding standards, that's a that's a huge separation. So yeah. not quite sure why or how, but nonetheless, uh, our uh, cost for seal coating oil that we typically use is, is the, this one here, CRS two P, uh, would be two eighty eight. And so we can see considerably less than you know, three bucks. We'll go with uh, Megs on the um, materials and application for seal coating. Okay, motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any other discussion? Not. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Fuel bids. Okay. Uh, we got fuel bids. We bid the fuel out, and we did get two vendors uh, to bid on fuel. Um, Ally Cooperative and Energy Solutions. Energy Solutions, from what I understand, is tied to Ally Cooperative, so they were kind of competing, bidding against each other a little bit. Um, anyway, uh, so when you look at these, um, it's broken down by location. 
and fuel type. So what we're looking at on the top here is regular gas. Gas you put in your car, normal gas, 87 on. So we bid out, uh, what we use is 87 no ethanol fuel. 87 on no ethanol fuel, and that's what we're doing. In that, in that arena, uh, just Alan. Yes. Before we go too much further, um, are we going to take all these together? I mean, do they do they all have to come from one company or the other, or can can, can it be split up? Um, I would not advise doing that. I would like to work with one vendor, and I can further just say that unfortunately, when we got the paperwork from Energy Solutions, it doesn't appear that they can deliver split loads to our facility. Karen, we need to take split loads. We can't take we can't take a full transport just because the way our tank, our fuel tank, is not uh, level. It's sitting uh, crooked, and so that 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 tanker won't. It don't fit in our tank. We have to be empty. Um, so when you look at the, the, the gas, it's 290. Their uh, Ally Cooperative is low there. Uh, we did uh, go ahead and bid a uh, high octane option, 91 octane option. Um, is that what you put in the, the pickups and stuff too? No ethanol, gas, and 87 energy? no ethanol. We run that in every, we have for as long as I've been here, 87 no ethanol. Um, however, um, if for some reason that we wanted 91, um, it could be delivered. Um, Allied Cooperative is a little higher, um, and uh, Energy Solutions was low on on that on that item. So then you go down further here, and now this is diesel fuel. We're getting into diesel fuel, and this is at our main location here at the shop. Uh, at that location, Energy Solutions is a, is a little bit cheaper by two cents. You can see the difference there, okay? And then uh, when you go down further, uh, now this is one of the outlying facilities here. This is our 1382 site. So that's mm -hmm. down south. Um, Allied Cooperative was the lower number there, lower at 339. And then going forward, we get out to our, our solid waste facility. We have a, a tank out there. Um, again, 339 LA Cooperative lower. And then we have an additional site up at Big Flats. Again, LA Cooperative is 339. And so how we bid this is uh, for those, if you're curious, we sent out a bid and we request the vendors to provide the price at a certain date. So every vendor is supposed to pull the price from the terminal on that day. And we, and we ask, yes, and we ask for verification of that so that when we look and compare the bids, we're, we're actually comparing the same day's fuel price and not, uh, you know, right. one day could be three, five cents difference. Day to day. So we ask for that specific date, and then we uh, also break it down, as you can see, into the varying costs that are, that they put into the fuels. Most, uh, really, the only one that they have a huge way to to to, to change the numbers is in the, in the profit markup and then freight charges. I mean, everybody's got pretty freight; they got to haul it here somehow, so they don't cost that. And then whatever they whatever they put in there. For their margin mark, which you can see varies from from state to state. They both in the same tournament. Um, when you look not at, that it matters. I mean, it's just. Yep. Like when curious. you look at these, yep. Um, Alley Cooperative was pulling from McFarland, and then Energy Solutions. There was two locations they were pulling from. One was from Junction City, and then the other one was from uh, Chippewa. Alley Cooperative was from McFarland, and then the other two are. Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, so buying by quantity doesn't matter. No, no, and so it, it does not. We're going to pay, uh, we're, we're not always going, for example, we're not always going to pay, uh, let me get to diesel. Uh, for example, we would not always pay $3.18 for fuel at the shop. If we order fuel next month and the fuel cost is 
299, we're going to pay 299 plus these other costs in here. So, so the only ones that are is marked the change is just that the cost the top what they're paying at the rack. Exactly. Yes. So that can vary. And the, exactly that's how it would go up and down. Thank you. Yeah. Well, all the other costs are locked in, in, in yeah. what they are. Well, I make a motion that we go with Allied and we stick with the 87 octane, uh, yeah. no, no ethanol. Second. Any motion made and signed to go along with uh, Allied Co op for the approval? Any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No motion. <laughs> Reviewing that contract and treat in auction. Um, so this is an item that I didn't get to. Uh, uh, we had on that tractor discussion last last month, and I failed to bring up trade option to trade. We have the option to trade our union in, and uh, so that's my question to the committee: Would you like to trade it in? Do you want to take it out on the market and see what happens? Our unit. Um, I have it in here, I believe. Uh, it's a 2005 case MXE 135 has approximately 6,400 hours on it. Um, and the attachment that goes with that um, is a 2005 McKenzie. It's a 23 foot boom, um, estimated right around 4,000 hours on that boom. Now, the boom itself and the mower deck. It, it it's not new anymore. I mean, it's been braced, it's been patched and welded and things, so it's, it's been used. Um, it, and it does cut uh, with this type of unit. We do cut you know, brush, that type of type of uh, growth uh, with that with that boom mower. So um, our book value uh, is is considerably less than that. Um, so we we run a, a twenty year depreciation on equipment and. That there are just you know it's just about depreciated now. They're willing to put thirty one thousand out. They're willing to per, yes, they're willing to give us thirty one thousand uh, dollars to send it over there. They'll take it as a trade in. As a trade towards it, yeah. To, I, yeah. I see that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, <clears throat> let them take a chance on an auction. I mean, an auction could be a lot better, or, or it could be a lot worse. <laughs> a lot of times, it's not going to be a lot better. No, you know, every, I mean, it, well, the tractor yeah. alone, if it was separated, would probably be, would probably break more. Yeah. So when everybody knows that the mower's been on it, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 so, we, like that. so I'll make a motion that we put, we trade it in. Okay. Second. Okay, most of the main second to go ahead with the trade in with uh, Reister and Schnell. Any other discussion? Not all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. I agree. Yes. This point is probably the time to do it. Review an act on wood bid and auction. Oh, uh, question is um, the wood pile. If you leave, I mean, you can't see if you can see it from here, but don't, they don't have to get up and look. Uh, excess wood that has come off of our brushing efforts on County Z. Some of the landowners just don't want their wood and they ask us to dispose of it. Uh, some of it just gets chipped. And then some of it comes back here. Uh, that stuff is in a pile out here. I believe we have approximately 30, 30 plus cord out there. Question is, you want us to sell it locally? You want us to put it out on Wisconsin surplus? Now we have just the one item that we would is what we would be putting out there. Uh, the reason we brought it before you today to ask your, your opinion is last time we put it out locally, um, you know, we, we got one bed. Usually we get several bids for that. This pile here, likely a little more attractive is that it's more of a it's fresher wood type stockpile as opposed to. Uh, it's pretty much mixed. Mixed yeah. wood, no. Yeah, it's mixed. Yeah. It, uh, there's no guarantee it's all over all made. No, it is it's mixed. mixed. Yeah. Well, since the last time we only got one bid trying to sell it locally, I say we 
take a chance on putting out on Wisconsin surplus. Yeah, so I'll make that motion. Okay, second. Okay, so surplus and made the second it to go ahead and put it on the Wisconsin surplus and hope for the best. Any discussion? Yeah, anything else to go with that, Pat? Um, I mean, it depends on if the committee feels comfortable. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we could come up with some miscellaneous stuff that we're just waiting for the next option. But it's probably like more small stuff, not a quick. Let's say get rid of whatever you don't need. Okay, now all in favor of motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. We have an act on the state of Wisconsin DOT discretionary maintenance agreement. Correct one. I'll back up one second. Okay. We do also put once we put that on uh, Wisconsin surplus, we also will put it as a paper. Yeah. And folks, you know, folks, it's okay. on Wisconsin. So you need to go look there. Yeah. Okay. On to uh, uh, the DMA. Um, if you uh, can recall back, I'll try to keep it short and sweet here. The uh, we were working on a what what we call the PBM contract for the DOT for crack filling services on State Highway 13 from State Highway 21 to County Trump Highway D. Uh, we wrote that uh, estimate for them and uh, uh, it come back higher than they were anticipating. And uh, we, I think the DOT realized likely that there was a lot of separation that we weren't going to be able to meet. Uh, they opted uh, to uh, inquire if we would do this uh, form of agreement. It's called a discretionary maintenance agreement. It, it's still still the same project, State Highway 21 to County Trunk Highway D. Uh, it is a bit less in money, but in this agreement, we, the county, we work until the money is gone. So as we're approaching uh, the end of the funds, um, the DOT will say, all right, you need to stop, we're done, we're out of money. Or in this type of agreement, DOT, they do have the authority to run over this uh, dollar amount. So they can just say, yeah, you're close, please continue and finish. Well, you're a mile it, short it, or something. It's, and... it's all on time and material. So whatever we have into it, we get back out of it. Yeah. So all of our hourly rates and uh, man hour rates are so that's that's this type of an agreement. Yes. Yeah. So. I'll make a motion we accept the bid from the state. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to uh, um, agree with the DMA on crack filling and any other discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carried. You, you want to do that county G bridge engineering thing that or um, so this is uh, the County Trunk MAJ Bridge. Um, if you remember back, um, we set the review committee up as the highway committee. You at that time elected Gordy to be the chair of that review committee. To uh, select a consultant, it would be your task to rank the applicants that submitted. So I, um, I put the, the project out for advertisement with, with guidance from the DOT. Uh, we have a rating matrix for those uh, submittals, and it, it really comes to a question if the committee would like to you know, meander through that today, uh, or if you want to set another meeting date to do that. We, I did send it out to 10, uh, 10 engineering companies. We have three responses, so when the time comes, if it's today or another day, there's a rating matrix. You would take that information, sit down, and review that submittal, and then provide <coughs> a ranking on, on the items. Yes. Um, I would suggest that we do and discuss it briefly earlier, and that is have Patrick send us the matrix and the uh, other materials so that we can take time to review it on our own and expedite things by the time we get here. What time frame passes uh, do they want to answer so, on that? So I would like to uh, I would like to have a decision with you this month if we could on okay. a selection of a, 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 a selection from this committee on the consultant. And 
I originally thought that potentially prior to county board was an option, but now I see uh, there is a meeting of the poll uh, prior to that that evening. So I don't know. If, I don't know how much time you want or need. Um, if it could be a half hour or so, I don't know. You guys know me, and and I'll get the, get get something set up for you. I'm okay with going a half hour before the the whole meeting of the whole. I so I get five o'clock. Yeah. So we're, we'll have time. Make You'll get this stuff all to us right away, so we can look at it, and then we can decide. Yep, you will likely leave with it before you. Okay. If you wait a second, I can I can uh, get it separated for you this evening. Okay. That'll be on the 18th. Right. That'll be on the 18th. Yeah, be the 18th. Yeah. At five o'clock. Where are we going to do it at? Here or at the, the county board room? I think we do it at the county board room. Yeah. 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 I'll get a. Uh, I'll reach out to. Okay. It should take us more than a half hour, right? Well, uh, especially if we get to see it right ahead of time, we all should be able to get through that whole ranking in ten minutes. Probably. So once we once you do that, once you have that completed, I gather that data and I send that to DOT. Uh, the DOT is likely going to agree, and that and it's at that point. So this is not based on on cost. Um, this is based on on their qualifications, and then it's after that, then that the the. The financial discussion starts with the consultants and the DOT and the county. All right, let's set that up for five o'clock at the courthouse uh, on the 18th. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, there'll be an agenda posted at, for that specifically, and I'll just have that item. Correct. Correct. Yes, yeah. that was going to be a special meeting. Right. All right, so we'll put that on hold on the agenda and then we'll review and approval of attendance for WCHA Summer Road School. To put that on the agenda, the Summer Road School is coming up again on July, uh, July uh, June 5th to June 8th, I believe. Uh, June 5th to June 7th, I believe. Yes. And so. I don't have an agenda yet, so I wasn't able to share that with anybody, but I, I know uh, to follow our policies there for those that are interested in attending, the committee needs to authorize that before you can go. And I'm not sure because I haven't sent out an agenda. I go to the winter one. I just soon just go to the one. Okay. Somebody else wants to go to the June one, that's fine with you. Yeah. <laughs> you interested in going get bored or what? <laughs> I'm not forcing you to go. I'm not forcing no, anybody. There to is go some good information, yeah. Adam. But like the three reasons. And if they're and they, they I where, I do attend. Where you live is where, where is that driving here? back and forth? Sure. 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 And Miss Mr. Pease is correct. If if you got to go and visit me and him, these two know, or these three no probably these. Yeah. I've gone to some of them before, right? But what I'm saying is, yeah, you guys live far enough, it's not the 25 miles that they won't pay for your hotel or the ours, they won't yeah. pay. The, you guys are over 25. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you want to put me down and I could uh, see what the topics are in the agenda, there might be some topics I'd like to go sit, sit in different meetings. Is that, a, is that one way you can do it, or, you, or is it all or nothing? Well, the thing is, is they they charge us so much for you attending the whole thing. Your registration covers all that. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll let you know back because I may be any on what that agenda stuff can go. Yeah. Okay. As soon as I get out, yeah. I looked tonight on the, on our website and it was not posted there yet either. So I thought I'd have yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm writing no action here. Well, we want to make a motion that uh, whoever would decide to go, that they get paid to registration to go up to one person, I guess. I okay. Yeah. Yes, I okay. yeah, I may go. I just, I'm not sure. I, uh, yeah, I, I would like to leave the option open. I think we just leave it open. Yeah, just leave it open. More than one month, so. No. So you want to make that motion, staff? Yeah, I'll make a motion that uh, whoever wants to go let. Pat no within a reasonable length of time. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve. 
whoever would like to go to that and get the registration done. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. 23 project status report. <coughs> What's the timeline that you have to send your registration down here for that? Well, we look. Probably, um, they probably ain't sure on that yet either. Yeah. 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 We'll see when, when it comes out. See yeah. when all it is. Um, so I uh, probably said for um I I guess I really don't have much for any of activity yet because most of our projects really haven't taken off. We haven't done anything. Yeah. Um, when we do, you start seeing a little bit of cost show up down here, especially with the seal coating. We have not started moving chips. We have not, you know, participated or undertaken any of the mill or overlays or any of that stuff. Um, I have not updated these two, uh, this item right here, uh, County Z or uh, County M. I guess I can put a date in there as there's, there's not been any other activity until this point. Um, there was a uh, County Z, um, it's, it's technically not, financially, it's not closed out. Uh, we will get small bills and or at times small checks as they go through their audit process on the project. So it will change some, but it's not, uh, we shouldn't be cracking, you know, fifty hundred thousand dollars $100,000. Smaller amounts now as they're, they're fine with the file. In County M, I didn't change. There's no really not much you would report there other than uh, we do know, I uh, just mentioned earlier, there is some activity out there as far as relocation of, of utilities. And, uh, and in with County M, I would just mention that, I think I've said this before a few times, the, the east side of County M is scheduled to start approximately mid August. So I don't know if there's other thoughts on this document. I don't know if it's the place to ask, but on your seal code, getting chips and stuff like that, um, I, I was wondering if if you guys are looking at the same thing. I know this year with Scott doing the, the town roads, they're switching to granite chips where that's supposed to wear longer or... or Supposed to cut down bigger, harder chip. Yeah, harder chips, so it's supposed to last longer. Oh, that's a FA2 or FA2 but I didn't know that if whatever there's some thoughts. I don't know where it's black. Yeah, and they they heat up fast. Yeah. I, we did a lot of it in our town, and uh, I don't really like them for falling snow. Yeah, because they're hard on the cutting edge of the heat blade, but but uh, get a little sun on them and they're cleaned off again. Yeah, yeah. I just just wanted to bring it up. I just thought you know. So we do use granite chips. They come out of typically they come out of the torque quarry. You know that that quarry, as you can see, even if you drive down here, depending on where they are at in, the, in their in their crushing process and what the color, color of the rock yeah. changes, we get a little bit of maybe that uh, grayish purple blue uh, color, and it, it varies in in we really see it on J. We don't uh, we don't have a black granite chip that I've found around here in this area. No, it's, I mean, it comes from the Black River or Chip or someplace up there, they haul it down. I just, they, I just wanted to ask what I did. In regards to the chip size, there's, there's a couple different sizes of chips and there's a, there's a quarter inch chip, the three inch chip. And then there's that the A2 chip, which is yeah. really fun. We, we try, uh, well, we found uh, what seems to work best for us is the three inch chip. Report on heavy department operations. A lot going on. Uh, well, we've had some things going on. So we uh, we spent some time crack filling down on County A from 13 to County B. Uh, we've completed crack filling on County Double E from G to the Marquette County line or First Avenue. Um, all of our snow fence uh, is down and put away. 
Uh, we've been doing some sweeping on the state and county, so that's our, you might see it running around our street sweeper. We've done some, uh, we're getting ready to do some for the Village of Friendship here now. And then uh, most likely uh, we'll run over to Washer County uh, when they get ready to help us uh, do some sweeping for them. Uh, we do have a backhoe, an excavator out on County Z removing stumps. Um, the stumps are being the machine sitting just south of H, I believe now. Um, and then they are mulching or seeding and mulching behind that. Those, all those disturbed areas. Uh, our fiscal manager position um, has been uh, filled. Um, Chris Jefferson from the Sheriff's Department will be making the transition out to highway here. His official first day is uh, May 3rd. Um, and I've talked with the sheriff already, and I think we're going to be able to work out a few days and, and hours where um, we, can, we can have him in advance of that as the current fiscal manager will be leaving us May 1st. Hopefully get some, some uh, time together to, to go through some stuff. Um, our road postings have been removed. We removed, some, well, we removed those on the 5th of April here. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, yeah, there is two things brought up in um, admin and finance. I don't know if you want to comment on the mechanic one position and also the, the, um, the other one was oh, the lawsuit update. So the mechanic one position, that's a uh, that topic was before the highway committee last month, and what that is is really a, a, it's not an ask for another body. That's not what that's not what this is. It's to reclassify, uh, to re-identify um, one of our existing mechanics, and so that passed through this committee uh, last month, and, and uh, I believe it was Monday we were at uh, that resolution was at admin finance. Uh, for their consideration, and we had uh, some some discussion and a few questions there. And uh, after that, it did pass through admin finance. So from there, now it goes uh, will be on county board next Tuesday night. So you will see that um, again. And then the other item uh, was was mentioned briefly. Uh, we uh, were named in a lawsuit and, and a little bit of some other stuff uh, for our uh, painting operations down. And we were painting for Columbia County at the time on one of their highways. Um, a young uh, person uh, got tangled up with one of our vehicles. Uh, some damage occurred. Uh, filed a claim and, and so forth. And anyway, the, the short version of that is their, their uh, the case was dismissed and uh, due to the uh, lack of an inappropriate process that, that was followed on behalf of, of the party. So there was nothing to be paid all the time. And then that was it? Yeah. Uh, I, just, the finance. I didn't know if these guys knew any of the particulars. Yeah. I don't want to over over speak. Right, right. But well, it's public knowledge. Yeah, I think. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any thoughts on the ditches out there in Quincy on Z? Oh, uh, County Z. We, we got we got rid of the water in the ditches on M, but now we got the bit water in the ditches. On Z. One of the thoughts. Uh, one of the things uh, asked. I uh, actually talked to the the. Consultant that was doing the construction oversight out there. Yeah, we tried to put those little weeps in there, but not doing very much at the moment. Uh, one of the things that you know they talked about, or he suggested maybe, was to uh, not going to be the most popular, but to remove that premium topsoil, and that's really what it is. It's not. It's not 
The topsoil that was placed in those ditches in those areas was not virgin topsoil from the Adams County area. It was hauled in from another county, so it's heavier. Too much, two hundred. And, it, and it's it's it get it holds and closes up and holds moisture a lot better than what we have. So one of the thoughts was uh, remove that topsoil for a longer stretch, longer distance within that ditch line, and see if that allows a lot, you know, a lot much larger area for that water to to disperse or seep away in be allowed to seep through that that topsoil that that warm the uh, uh virgin topsoil i guess if you will for our area which is typically kind of sandy does the height of the groundwater in that area have anything to do with it? i don't, I don't think, think it's so. really groundwater. Well, I mean, a lot of areas you see stand doesn't no there's just irritating yeah they've there's never been any water it, it, it's, it's not ground. It's not. It's not groundwater here at this location. You know, it's, it's more. It's, it's kind of trapped. I think the topsoil's almost water. got some clay mixed and sealed up enough that it's not. Yeah. So that was one of the options that they thought maybe um, try. Would that be something the county would do, or they'd have a contract? Uh, it was indicated when we had that discussion to be something we would do. In, well, it's not ideal. It's not like. Realigning a hill or something right. like yeah. that. So removing that topsoil and put something back in. So that would be one of the things that consider to do with those areas. Anything else? National report. Anybody have any questions on that or is there any update to that? Uh, we I, I don't have a great update for you in that we just don't have uh, huge projects running at the moment. So it's just really yeah. daily operations that are coming off just their general county drug heavy means activities. Um, I, I should just say that uh, I'm sure you guys have seen our shoulder and trust running around. That's the mm -hmm. other thing we're acting with right now is, is trying to uh, reclaim and, and, and fix up some shoulders. And, and All right, next meeting date would be uh, May 11th. Yeah, Our, there, were, there were some concerns about the shoulders in Newchester due to the soft ground. You know, we had a bumpy spring with up and down temperatures, but there was some damage done to some of the shoulders. Was there, were they going to blow and cover some of that area up in Newchester? Yep, shoulders in the town of Newchester. Uh, shoulders in the town of Newchester. Have not been brought to our attention. And so, how it works is uh, similar like this. Um, if our drivers are negligent and we have a couple of plow operators in the room, I'm not calling it negligent. I'm just okay. saying it was, it was warm, the ground wasn't froze, so it's hard, it pulls up gravel, that kind of just normal plowing. <laughs> anybody, would, anybody would make the same mistake. So, I'm just wondering if there's something we can do about it to clean them up a little bit. Um, if the town would like us to, we will. I'll mention it at a cost. <laughs> it won't be for free. Yeah. Uh, because if we were not negligent in our operation of the truck, so just plowing by in nature by itself, that doesn't constitute negligence at the truck. So more eyes look at it. No, I'm not I'm not making a statement. Yeah. It's just, it's just, I, I'm just I'm getting a little defensive no. because we've heard you know I've been down that path more than once. Now if we leave the highway and we're off in the ditch like 20, 30 feet or something like that, yeah, we we erred. Uh, and that's happened on uh, snowstorm or something like that, where we get off not 30 feet, but we get off and miss the road. That's an issue. We'll take care of that. Staying on the road and catching that shoulder, where unfortunately sometimes the shoulder is higher than the road itself. That's not that's not a negligent issue. That's that's something else going on there. So, yeah, they haven't really reached out to us for anything as far as looking at or trying to grade those out. Not, a, not an excellent solution. You take a creator and lay it back out the best you can, and if you don't get it again next year. Well, if it freezes up before you plow again, it'll be all right. Well, I mean, that's the, 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 the snow that, that last yeah. Yeah. couple of snows we got. Yeah. The ground's not out, and we got snow. What's that cost is out? We need to be careful. Oh, yeah. All right, meeting adjourned.